Hello everyone, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist based in Vienna, Austria. In this video, I provide an overview of the accuracy of the Aura Ring 2 and its usefulness. I base this on experiments that I've done of its sleep tracking capability, heart rate and heart rate variability accuracy, its temperature measurements, and some of the real life implications of some of the scores it provides. For much of the video, I'll be placing results that I already showed you in previous videos into context, but of course, I'll also share some new results. Specifically, I checked if the Aura Ring sleep score was predictive of how my mind and body acted each day. Let's start with some conclusions up front. I definitely think that the Aura Ring can be used to track your health and well being and maybe even improve it. It's pretty accurate at most things that it measures, except for sleep stages. However, the fact that it's not that good at tracking your sleep stages might not be a major issue, and I'll try to address why in this video. As always, I don't want to waste your time, so I'll try to be concise and to the point. Also, timestamps are in the description below and on the timeline. Let's start with sleep tracking, one of the main selling points of the Aura Ring. Specifically, I want to see if the Aura Ring can track the different sleep stages that I go through each night. I tested the sleep tracking accuracy of the Aura Ring against a professional scientific sleep EEG monitor for 18 nights. This sleep EEG monitor actually measures my brain waves during sleep. As you might know, these sleep stages are light sleep, deep sleep, REM sleep and awake. And I described these findings in detail in one of my previous videos. Just to give you a bit of background, you might be wondering why I have access to a professional scientific sleep EEG monitor. Well, as a scientist, I specialize in data analysis. As a side project, I collaborate with researchers at the Donders Institute in the Netherlands to track my sleep over a period of several years using these scientific professional EEG monitors. Now, unlike an EEG monitor, the Aura Ring does not use brain waves to track your sleep. Instead, it uses your movement and your heart rate. So, how did the Aura Ring perform in tracking my sleep stages? Actually, not that great. It had an overall accuracy of 58.9%. Of course, this percentage varied a bit over the 18 nights that I tested the Aura Ring, as you can see in this plot here. Each of the 18 nights is indicated by a blue circle. The date of measurement is on the horizontal axis and the percentage correct on the vertical axis. And the average percentage correct is indicated by this red dotted line here. And as you can see, some nights did a little bit better than the average. For instance, this night here was one of the best nights, which had about 70% prediction accuracy. And there were also some bad nights where the Aura Ring did really poorly and had a prediction accuracy even under 50% like this night here. Now, as a quick example, let's look at a good night of recording with the Aura Ring and a poorer night of recording with the Aura Ring. Here I've plotted one night where the Aura Ring performed pretty well. So on top we have the results according to the professional EEG device and on the bottom the results according to the Aura Ring. On the horizontal axis we have the time during the night and on the vertical axis we have the different sleep stages. So if we look at the professional EEG device we can see I started awake then had a bit of light sleep then some deep sleep some light sleep and later you can see my REM cycles. Now the Aura Ring pretty much follow this pattern. So we see that it first goes to light sleep, deep sleep, later I have some more deep sleep, some REM sleep, and it also seems to pick up on some of the REM stages here. Though it's not perfect, it's pretty okay for the Aura Ring. Now let's take a look at an example where the Aura Ring did not perform so well. And that's what you see plotted here. So again, on top the professional EEG device and on the bottom the Aura Ring. And as you can see, the Aura Ring detected almost no REM sleep, whereas each sleep cycle is supposed to end in REM sleep, which you do see in the recording according to the professional EEG monitor. So this is one night where the Aura Ring performed really poorly. And this was an overall problem also of the Aura Ring where it was really bad at picking up on REM sleep. Now, if you want to know more about the sleep prediction accuracy of the Aura Ring and want to know which sleep stages it gets right and which sleep stages it gets wrong, check out my dedicated video I made on that. Just to put the accuracy of the Aura Ring into perspective, the Fitbit Charge series, which are some of the best fitness trackers I've found for sleep tracking, have an accuracy of over 70%, so a lot better. However, the fact that the Aura Ring is not that great at tracking your sleep stages does not mean that its sleep tracking does not hold any value. Let me explain why. 
In my opinion, for most of us, the most important part of sleep tracking is tracking when we go to bed, when we wake up and the total amount of time we spend in bed. Because this is where most of us actually get it wrong. And the Aura Ring is actually pretty good at determining when we go to bed and when we wake up. Later in this video, I will also discuss how the Aura Ring sleep score correlates with different measures in my life, like my blood pressure. This tells you something about the real life consequences of the sleep score that the Aura Ring provides. The second measure I wanna discuss is temperature tracking. The Aura Ring measures your temperature throughout the night to get an impression of your general fitness, but also to detect a possible fever. This is especially important now with the coronavirus going around, which can also induce a fever. Now for the whole time I was wearing the Aura Ring, I also measured my temperature in the morning with a rectal thermometer. And rectal thermometers are generally considered the most accurate way of measuring your temperature for a consumer at home. Each day I would also track how sick I felt subjectively and every three weeks I would draw my blood and measure the amount of white blood cells I had in my blood in the lab. And a raise of white blood cells is an indication of possibly having an infection. Now let's have a look at those results. Here I show the most important results when it comes to the temperature measurements of the Aura Ring. On the horizontal axis you see the temperature deviation of the Aura Ring. So it doesn't give you an absolute temperature, it gives you your deviation compared to normal. And on the vertical axis you see my rectal temperature in the morning immediately measured after I wake up with Fahrenheit on the right and degrees Celsius on the left. And as you can see there's a clear correlation between the two. The most important thing you can see here is that the times that I had a really high temperature according to my rectal thermometer, the Aura Ring was also able to detect that I had a relatively high temperature. So this is what you want. If you have a fever or something close to a fever, that the Aura Ring should be able to detect this. And we even see a correlation in my normal temperature range. And these measurements might be more important when it comes to telling you about your general fitness that day and your readiness score. Now here we have another interesting plot. On the horizontal axis, we have the temperature deviation according to the Aura Ring, so the same as before. And on the vertical axis, we have my sick score, but this is a subjective feeling sick score. So at the end of the day, I would fill out how sick I felt that day on a scale of one to 10. And what we can see here is that the times that I felt most sick, the Aura Ring also gave a large temperature deviation. So that's really interesting. This means that even a subjective feeling of being sick correlates with the temperature score of the Aura Ring. This plot I mostly want to show you because I think it's very cool. On top here again we have my subjective feeling sick score, but now over time. So you can see from July 2017 until March 2020. And you can see there were some moments like here, here, here and here, where for a bit of a longer time I was feeling a bit sick. And on the bottom here we have the number of white blood cells in my blood, so the concentration of white blood cells. And I usually took a duplicate measurement or a triplicate measurement to make sure that they were accurate. And as you can see, quite often when my white blood cells were a bit higher, I had a period of feeling a bit more sick before that. And this could be an indication that I actually had an infection before that and that was making me feel sick. So the Aura Ring seems to be pretty good at tracking your temperature. Also, a study came out recently that showed that the Aura Ring was able to detect COVID-19 associated fever in 50 patients, at least to some degree. However, this study does still need to be peer reviewed. The third thing I wanna discuss is heart rate and heart rate variability. The Aura Ring measures these throughout the night and they can be used to estimate your general health and well-being and also your stress levels. I tested the accuracy of the heart rate and heart rate variability measurements of the Aura Ring in a previous video and I also discussed a scientific paper published on the subject. Now I won't go into detail as to what heart rate and heart rate variability are because that is discussed in the other video, but briefly, heart rate variability is the variation in time between heartbeats. And a bigger heart rate variability has been associated with general better health and a smaller heart rate variability has been associated with things like smoking, alcohol usage and stress. So in general you can say that a larger heart rate variability is better. On the other hand, it's better to have a lower resting heart rate. The Aura Ring uses your heart rate variability and your resting heart rate to give you some tips as to how intense your workout should be that day. Now of course this only makes sense if the measurements that the Aura Ring does are accurate. So let's take a look at the results. Here you can see one example night of heart rate measurements with the Aura Ring and the Aura Ring here is plotted in red. And at the same time, I also measured my heart rate with the Polar H10 chest strap, which is generally considered to be one of the most accurate ways of measuring your heart rate for a consumer. 
On the horizontal axis, we have the time, and on the vertical axis, my heart rate. And as you can see, the heart rate according to the aura ring and the polar H10 chest strap follow each other very nicely. Now we can actually plot this for several nights combined to see how accurate it is. And that's what you see plotted here. My heart rate according to the polar H10 is on the horizontal axis and my heart rate according to the aura ring is on the vertical axis. And as you can see, they agree very nicely. There's almost perfect agreement. So this black line here is where they would agree perfectly. And I would say the aura ring is almost spot on with measuring my heart rate. Now let's look at something similar for heart rate variability. That's what I've plotted here. So again, in red, the aura ring and in blue, the polar H10, but now heart rate variability is along the vertical axis. And as you can see for this example night, the heart rate variability according to the aura ring and the polar H10 agree pretty well. But let's again combine data for several nights and plot this together to see how accurate the aura ring is when it comes to heart rate variability. And that is displayed here. So on the horizontal axis, we have the heart rate variability according to the polar H10. And on the vertical axis, my heart rate variability according to the aura ring. And as you can see, there's a nice correlation between the two. There are some moments where it deviates a bit, but overall, I would say that the aura ring does a decent job of estimating your heart rate variability. And it's good enough to draw some conclusions about the quality of your night. Finally, I wanna see if the scores that the Aura Ring provides actually have real world value. In my opinion, the most important scores that you get are the readiness score and the sleep score. In a video I made two weeks ago, I checked if the readiness score of the Aura Ring could predict my mental and physical state over the last year and a half. And I saw for instance that it associated with my blood pressure and how tired I felt each day. I also figured out how the readiness score was actually being calculated based on the raw data. In this video, I wanna do something similar for the sleep score. I wanna see if the sleep score I got in the morning could predict how my body and mind acted and reacted each day. The reason I can do this analysis is because I've been tracking many things that have to do with my mental state, my physical state, and my surroundings for the last three years as part of a scientific project. This actually also includes weekly brain MRIs, sleep EEGs, and microbiome measurements. If you want to know more about that, check out the video linked here. But now let's have a look at the results of the sleep score. Each dot here is a single type of measurement and a line indicates there's some type of correlation between the measurements in the data. So if we look for instance at my blood glucose measurements in the morning, we can see that it's connected to a couple of things like my sleep balance score, my peripheral perfusion index, but also the sleep timing according to the Aura Ring. But for now, I want to focus on the Aura Ring sleep score, which is indicated with a big red circle here. We can see that it's connected to a lot of things. Most of them are actually aura related, but there are two that are not. First of all, it's connected to how many milliliters of liquid I drank the day before, and also my subjective scoring of how I slept. Now we can look at this in a bit more detail. So here you can actually see the statistics behind the graph I just showed you, where these are the strongest associations of different variables with the sleep score of the aura ring. Now you can see that the top ones are all related to sleep, either measured by the Fitbit or the Aura Ring, but I want to focus on a few that are not related to that. And the top ones I highlighted here in green. Now the first one I just showed you as well is an association between the sleep score of the Aura Ring and my subjective feeling of my sleep quality. And you can see there's a positive association between the two. Here I actually plotted that data with my sleep score according to the Aura Ring on the horizontal axis and my subjective sleep score on the vertical axis. And you can see there's a clear correlation between the two. Finally, what is also very interesting is that similar to the readiness score that I discussed in a previous video, also the sleep score of the Aura Ring is associated with my blood pressure in different variables and measured by different devices. And you can see there's a negative association between my blood pressure and the sleep score of the Aura Ring. So the better my sleep score, the lower the blood pressure. So that's what you see plotted here. My sleep score on the horizontal axis and my blood pressure in the morning on the vertical axis. And you can see there's a clear negative correlation between the two. Though of course there's still a lot of noise around this line because there are so many other factors that would influence my blood pressure. Now I made a similar graph for my evening measurements which somehow indicate how my day went in the end and this is for me the most interesting. And again we're going to focus on the Aura Ring sleep score. And if we look at that, we can see that the sleep score of the Aura Ring is also associated with how tired I felt over the entire day. So not just in the morning, what we saw before, but actually my general feeling of tiredness over the entire day. Let's also look at that in a bit more detail. This is a similar table to before, but now for my evening measurements. And again, I wanna focus on a few associations highlighted in green here that I found most interesting. So let's have a look. 
As we saw in the graph model, the sleep score of the aura ring is very strongly associated with how tired I felt that day and it's a negative association. So the better I slept, so the better my sleep score, the more tired I felt, which makes sense of course. That's what you see visualized here. The sleep score on the horizontal axis and my subjective estimation of how tired I felt that day on the vertical axis. And again, there's a clear negative correlation here. So the worse my sleep score, the more tired I felt. Somehow there's also a positive association between my sleep score and the temperature outside. So the warmer the day, the better I slept. What I also found interesting is that my sleep score associated with the number of mouse clicks and the number of keystrokes I did in a day on my MacBook. So somehow there's a relation between how well I slept and the number of keystrokes I did. Now I'm not sure if this is a causal relationship, so if the sleep score actually influenced the number of keystrokes and mouse clicks, but there's definitely an association and it's positive. So the better I slept, the more keystrokes and the more mouse clicks I did. And finally, we can see that even in the evening, my blood pressure is still lower if I got a better sleep score. So at least this shows that the Aura Ring has some predictive capability. I also checked how the sleep score was being calculated. And I actually found this in the documentation of the API. According to the documentation, the most important part of the Aura Ring sleep score is your total sleep time, which makes up about 35% of the score. After that, the most important is sleep disturbances, then equally important are total REM sleep, total deep sleep, sleep efficiency, sleep latency, and sleep alignment. So here we can already see that total sleep time is one of the most important factors in making your sleep score. So what is my verdict on the Aura Ring? Well, I do believe you can use it to track your health and well-being. And if you use it right, you can even use it to improve your well-being. I actually have a colleague who actively uses the Aura Ring scores to plan his days and his workouts and he tries to optimize his readiness score and manages to get consistently good scores. I personally use the data from the Aura Ring to passively collect data on my life just because I think data is very cool and to see different associations and I don't do too much with the Aura Ring's data on a daily basis. If you compare our readiness scores over the last few years, it kind of makes me cry a little bit on the inside to see how much better my colleagues scores are compared to mine. On the other hand, I do believe that these scores are just a tool to help you optimize your life. And in the end, the most important thing is that you feel great. So you should definitely not get stressed out if your scores are a bit worse for a few days. Overall, I can generally recommend the Aura Ring unless you're specifically interested in tracking your sleep stages. In my videos, I do scientific tests on different devices like the Aura Ring, the Fitbit and the ScanWatch. And in the end, I hope to use tracking to improve my life. So if you like that subject and like this video, consider subscribing to my channel and also consider giving it a thumbs up because it makes it easier for other people to find my videos. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.